completely fucked up. You know that feeling that the whole country is like one inch away from saying, that's it, forget it. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty short video. Um, on my last video, I had went and, you know, we looked up what was on the debt clock, and I did not realize that we had actually hit $27 trillion on the U.S. debt clock. And that's not even total U.S. debt. That's not the uh, full figure. <sighs> Some people here know that I'm pretty nerdy about all this and my my channel is not just strictly on economics because that can get really boring and there's a lot of really good people out there that keep up with that kind of stuff um you've got lynette zhang over at itm trading you've got money gps uh jeremiah babe jb i like all of their channels those are some great channels to go and check out if you really want to get into the nitty gritty and look at some numbers right? But I don't cover this kind of stuff often. Now, I want to talk about this because I noticed today there's still people that are getting wrapped up and involved in the election selection as if it really matters. Guys, there's a few key things where left or right, they're all on the same page. And that's not the page that you want to be on. They're always okay to go to war and drop a bomb somewhere. They're always okay with raising the debt ceiling you know, we see debt constantly going up. They're okay with all of those things, right? You're going to continue to be taxed. Your income tax, your property tax, these kinds of things will continue to be taxed. The uh, gun laws, left or right, it doesn't matter. There's going to be new gun laws almost every single year. So a lot of that stuff, election selection, it doesn't really matter whenever we go and we look at the U.S. debt. It shows you the only thing that presidents are good at is out bombing the last guy or out spending the last guy. So we're going to get into that just a little bit. I just want to show you some numbers. Now, before we get into that stuff, I do have a pretty funny video for you to watch. Um, so I've got some, I've got something that'll make you laugh and we're going to start with that today. Oh, it's just, it's fantastic. And I did, I'm still working on the layout. We're changing some things up, but I did want to add a uh, gold ticker, which we'll see if that works because right now everything's kind of closed. So we'll know tomorrow if that's working. And I'm going to keep the national debt up there because that's a huge deal. Even if I'm not talking about it every single day, I want you guys to be able to see that it is there and it's astronomical. Um, to make it a little bit easier for some folks, because I have gotten questions here and there about where to buy gold, how to buy gold, or silver, you know, whatever it is. I think most people just say gold. Um, so gold or silver, precious metals. I do also have a banner up at the top for Wise Wolf Gold and Silver Exchange. So if you don't feel like going down into the uh, description, phone number, everything is up there. Feel free to text Tony, I think, anytime. Maybe don't call him at like 3 in the morning. That wouldn't be very cool. But you could text that number anytime and actually get in touch with him and see what he might have in stock for you. So... Now that all that's out of the way, because Wise Wolf is the sponsor of this channel and a good friend of mine, um, just to touch on that, I want everybody to know that at any point in time, literally day one, whenever I started my channel, I could have had an affiliate link or something with JM Bullion or SD Bullion and a couple of other people out there. I never did that because I don't care for those big box store experiences. I don't really care for those places, right? So when people ask me, the only place that I'll go to to buy um, silver offline is Apmex. And that's just because I'm used to them. They are the biggest kind of people out there to go and get it from. But I have had a problem in the past and they're the only company that has ever made something right for me. So if you are going to go online, I just choose them. But honestly, I'm somebody that likes to find the little local guys out there and be able to support them so these big box stores don't continue to kind of hammer down on them. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulations that go into that kind of stuff. And for these small guys to stay operating, it's not as easy. So if you can shop locally, go find your local coin store. Um, if you still want to shop locally, Tony's your guy. He's in Missouri, but he can ship stuff out to you. So that's kind of nice. Now um, we can get into this fabulous video here. So just to give you, <laughs> just to give you a heads up, this guy is Alan Joyce. I hope I'm saying that right. He's CEO of Qantas Airlines. This is one of the airlines that is trying to make it so you have to have a health pass, a Covey pass, an app on your phone, maybe something around your wrist or implanted into you. They want you to have that so you can fly on their planes. That's probably why this guy got pied. Let me uh, 
make sure my I don't have my desktop volume up. You need to hear this because he actually I think they bleep it out, but he does cuss a little bit. Here to announce the. Oh. 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 the Emerging from backstage, a man. That is fantastic. Like, guys, this is on the news. It's live. He's speaking in front of a crowd of people, and somebody just comes from backstage and pies him. And in a suit who grabbed Mr. Joyce and smashed a pie into his. That's just great pie form. This is better than the Bill Gates one. Like, Bill Gates was great because obviously none of these people ever expect that to happen. But like, if you're gonna pie somebody, this was fantastic. Come around the back of them, hold them there, and then straight pie. Like, that's just all pie. It's fantastic. His face. I don't know what that was about. Excuse me. Uh, I might take a break for a second, guys, and just clean up a little bit. I want to know if anybody saw this <laughs> or if you happen to know where the full video of this is. Does he come back and continue speaking? Like, does he come back with a new suit? Um, does he come back with pie on his face and on his suit? I just want to know, like, did he ever actually come back? I, I feel like you just can't come back from this. How do you continue after that? And I'll come back. Alan, when there is a vaccine, are you going to require all of your passengers to be vaccinated before they get on a plane? Yeah, we are looking at changing our terms and conditions to say for international travellers uh, that we will ask people to have a vaccination before they can get on the aircraft. We'll ask them to have a vaccination before they get on the aircraft. I think you deserve a pie in the face, sir. Uh, what do you need at the... I need to turn this down just a little bit. Domestically, uh, we'll have to see what happens with COVID-19 in the market, but certainly... He just keeps talking about COVID-19. So one more of the pieing in the face, just so you can watch Here that again. <laughs> what the F and heck? What the heck? All right, so here we are. We got our laughs and giggles out of the way. Now let's get a little bit serious here. U.S. national debt. Guys, I feel like just not too long ago, this is what like really made this sink in for me. And I'm about to show you some numbers. Only like a couple months, maybe like not even a year ago, it was like literally just months ago, I was telling you that we hit 24 trillion. It was a big deal, I think, back in um, 2019 when we hit 22 trillion. Trillion with a T, a big capital T. We're at 27 trillion and it's not going to slow down. This was going to keep going at the same pace, whether COVID hit or not. But now we've got this manufactured crisis that came into play. We have just put debt on a rocket ship to fucking Jupiter. It's gone astronomical. Um, the total, U.S. total debt, is eighty-five trillion. Now that actually has to do. That includes the household, businesses, state and local governments, um, financial institutions, and the federal government, while as the national debt, national public debt outstanding represents the face amount or principal amount of marketable and non-marketable securities currently outstanding. Um, and people think that this is okay. It's not okay. If you want to see how not okay it is, I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, you can, I think. Um, if I come over here to U.S. gross domestic product, it's only at 21 trillion. That's not good. We have way more debt than what we can ever ever pay off this is impossible this this is this alone right here screw everything just erase every other problem that we have in the good old us of a this alone is why it doesn't matter who gets into office this alone it can stand by itself it is such a problem we're literally looking at the everything bubble so now if i come and i take you over here this is a. Uh, debt we've got from 1929 all the way down till recently so i'm going to scroll slowly here and if you look over here this is debt to gdp ratio notice how this both sides just continue to uptick i'm just going to scroll slowly till we get into the present okay and then we'll talk about it a little bit more right here is the first time that we had 103 percent for debt to GDP ratio. So what was going on then? It was the Cold War. All right, now let's keep going, keep going. Notice it just keeps going up. 
I'm probably not scrolling slow enough for you, but you can see sometimes it would teeter back and forth by, you know, a trillion or so. As we keep going, you just keep noticing that debt keeps rising, keeps rising. It's just insane. So in 2009, we were at 11 trillion. All right. Now, if we come here to 2016, we were at 19 trillion. 2017, 20 trillion. All right. So you see, it was kind of, it was pretty steady. It was pretty steady. 2018, 21 trillion. 2019, 22 trillion. 2020, at the end of Q2, 26 trillion. But you guys can see, because I've got the ticker up here, we're at 27 trillion. And this is going to keep going. What happens when it all stops? See, this is the thing, and this is why the president doesn't really matter. This works until it doesn't work. That might not make sense to a lot of you guys. This is the zombie economy that we're dealing with right here. 27 trillion, no matter what we, we couldn't even sell the whole damn country off for that, guys. I mean, maybe you could, but you wouldn't want to be sold off, right? This is why they're pushing that digital currency so hard. This is why they want everything to be digital. Because when this inflation really starts to hit, which some of you can see it now in your stores and the items that you're buying, when this really starts to hit, they're not going to want you to be counting your cash. They want you, they want it to be easy. That swipe of a card, um, I guess like Apple Pay type stuff, maybe your wrist, whatever it might be. They want this to be an easy transition for you, but I'm not sure how easy this will be because most people don't like something new. It, it scares them really bad. And I would also like to point out, we're at 27 trillion. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of debt out there. There's a lot of dollars floating around out there. Really, it's just digits on a screen now, right? They don't actually have to print it anymore. Somebody can just go and type in on a computer and make new money. It's not backed by anything. The only thing that backs it is trust. How much trust do you have in our government? How much trust do you have in other governments? What happens when that trust starts to fade? What happens when the Fed says they just they pull the cord on it, man? And they that's why this is an evil, evil, evil cycle. No matter what, the debt will keep going up. And this is why I tell you to have food, have water, have defense. You know, I'm not thinking that some insane biological warfare type event is going to break out. I don't think that we're going to see... I mean, these things are... All of these things are possible, but they're not my biggest threat. And your biggest threat is this debt. The debt is threat. I like that. I don't think that, you know, wars are going to pop off with other countries where they're coming down on us here. You know, there's enough chaos that we have going on within our own country um, that will never be solved because people are bickering about small things when in reality they should be looking at the bigger picture. Neither side cares about you. 98% of the votes for the Patriot Act went through. Flying, There was like one person that voted nay. That should tell you that they don't give a shit about your freedoms. No one is going to be put in office that will restore your freedoms. All right. Maybe I don't have the best solution for you, but I'm just trying to tell you to get independent because this stuff is going to fall apart. This is our biggest threat. Not this, you know, made up thing that's going around right now. It's not some other country that's going to pop off with you. None of all of those things are so minuscule when you look at this and understand that it's going to keep going because we know that they're going to keep pushing this agenda, right? Yeah, the stock market looks good. It's because of all this debt that's been printed. How much did you get? When when they laid you off or told you that you couldn't go back to work, how much did you get? At most, it was $1,500, right? How much did those giant zombie corporations get that should have been bankrupt and fallen apart a long time ago? Yeah, think about that. Neither side cares about us. That's just... I really wanted to make this clear today because... If you go and you were to look at this, this is from thebalance.com. It literally goes all the way back to 1929. 
U.S. national debt by year compared to GDP in major events. I'll probably just try to share this with you in the links. It'll be all the way at the bottom in the links below. But just go scroll through this and see what was happening. You know, why did we jump into this? Because they put little key dates here. Um, little key dates for you to look at and kind of see what was going on during that time period. It's just insane to look at. Because if you just look at what we did from 2018 to 2020, that's a pace that we don't want to be on. This is the problem. I'll, I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. You can't not spend, you can't not, not outspend the last guy. Does this make more sense? You have to keep printing money is all I'm trying to say. That's as simple as it gets. Because if not, this whole thing comes to a halt. The whole thing. It falls apart at the seams. That everything bubble, somebody just comes and they take a pin to it. Boop. Gone. A, a thing that scares me about that too. Every year, but almost every month now, I notice different websites and stuff that I go on. You notice that there's the, um, the third party type lenders. I think like Klarna and Alipay. I don't really know what these things are called. I, I think I'm on the right track though. If you wanted to buy like a pair of sunglasses and they were like $30, you can make payments on them. Um, there's another website that I work on where um, you can buy like different merchandise and stuff like t-shirts and whatnot. You can make payments on some of those items. And we're talking about really small items. So they're trying to get you in as much debt as, po as humanly possible. And it also makes me think that it's getting younger and younger people deeper into debt before they even really start their life out, which they kind of do whenever you get a student loan anyway. Um, so I just want everybody to think about these things. And this Christmas, please, Christmas is not about the presents. It's not about any of the stuff that you get or can give. So if you are struggling at all, don't worry about that shit. Even if you're not struggling, don't worry about that stuff. Get yourself ready for whatever's about to happen. You can still have a great Christmas without way overspending on just useless things, right? What are all of these things really going to give us when all this stuff falls apart? This shit won't be worth anything. It won't be worth anything at all. This stuff doesn't matter. What does matter is tangible items that can keep you going when this bubble pops. When they decide to pull the plug... Everything's coming down with it. Everything. So just get yourselves ready for that. Um, I, I just want to get this out there because I know that people get very excited about the holidays. But if you don't have the money to spend, don't spend it. And even if you do have the money to spend, put yourself in a better position for what's to come. Um, so that's just the message I wanted to get out today. Uh, that, that U.S. debt clock is just insane and it's only going to keep going up. Bye guys. I'll see you tomorrow.